So I have an object here. This is just a plastic stirring rod, but it's a nice cylindrical shape with a uniform density. And what I'd like to do is actually work out the density. And I can do that by recording its mass using a mass balance. And then I can work out its volume, perhaps by measuring the diameter using a, an appropriate device and measure the length using a, a, a ruler. So what I can do is in order to work out its density, uh, the density is going to be equal to its mass divided by pi r squared L. And I can do that, I can put some numbers in, but what I really like to do is work out how certain I am about the final density of this object. And in order to do that, what I need to know is the uncertainties in all the measured values I'm using. So I need to know my, uh, my uncertainty in the mass, my uncertainty in the radius, and my uncertainty in the length. Now, depending on the device you're using, you might find that you've got quite an accurate mass balance. And perhaps you know, that the, you know the mass to an uncertainty of 0.1%. It might be, however, that when you measure the radius, you're using uh, something which you're not so certain about, and it might be perhaps 2.8%. So I'm just making these numbers up. And the length uh, maybe is within plus or minus 1%. So here we have the percentage uncertainties in these values here. But what's the total uncertainty? Well, to work out the total uncertainty in your final answer, what we do is we just combine all of these uncertainties together. Now, the thing is, um, it doesn't matter if you're dividing or timesing, Every time you see a term in the equation, you add the uncertainty on. So here we've got the mass recorded once. Uh, so that's an uncertainty of 0.1%. Pi, because it's a constant that has no uncertainty. But we add that to the uncertainty in our value of r, which is 2.8. But here, we multiply it by r again. And in actual fact, that means the uncertainty gets even bigger. If we had it cubed, it would get bigger than that. Uh, the uncertainty in L is 1%, so we then just add 1% onto that. So that means then my combined uncertainty for density is going to be equal to 6.7%. Okay, uh, And this is just following some simple rules. So we can write these down as follows. Where here, this is just the final thing that we're looking for. So if y is equal to a and b, and we know the uncertainties in a and b, then the total uncertainty in y is just going to be equal to the uncertainty in a, added to the uncertainty in B. Here, we've got the uncertainty in A added to the uncertainty in B, and we don't square it, but we add the uncertainty in B on again. If B was cubed, we just add it on another time. So every time this term comes up here, we just add the uncertainty on. It doesn't matter if you're multiplying things together or dividing, you know, because you're dividing, it doesn't make the uncertainty less. Here, again, it's equal to A plus B, so just adding those percentage uncertainties together. And again, for Y, it's going to be equal to A plus B plus C plus D. Okay, now this is not perfect, it is not exact, but what we're doing, we're just trying to sort of, I guess, a guesstimate, I suppose, just trying to quantify how much uncertainty there might be in a final answer.